All right, so um, continuing along this morning, it's uh, 919. We've got a lot done already. We've got a lot done. Um, and again, only for those in the know, creating complex curtain wall systems, uh, sometimes you create them yourself. Sometimes you create complex curtain walls all by yourself. Now, again, I start this video base, basing this on adaptive behavior. Now, characterized by or given to adaptation. Adaptive. Adaptive. As an adjective. In psychology, adaptive behavior refers to behavior that enables a person to get along in his or her environment with great success and least um, and a conflict with others. I have the wrong glasses on. So hold on a second. Now, here's a bat. Smoke. Today's world knows. Well, that's that's a no-no, right from the get-go. Okay. Now, adaptive behavior has a lot to play with creating complex curtain walls. It has a lot to it has a lot to do with it. Um, I'm only holding up these props so you get a better understanding of uh, adaptive behavior and creating complex criminal systems in Revit. Um, and again, props are important. In science, in the conveyance of an idea, props are important. Now, we're on the cusp of uh, a whole other world of geometry. Tools that we could use um, to uh, further augment and enhance these curtain wall systems. So, again, I want to take this slow uh, because you, you're going to be intimidated like I was with the math. I'm sitting there saying, I, I got to pre-calculus. And after that, the computer took over. So, the key to this is to, uh, is to just remember that Rome wasn't built in a day and we had, we had a lot of catching up to do. We had a lot of catching up to do. Um, you're gonna run into a learning curve. You're gonna run into, and Mike, you, you too. Mike, <laughs> bless Mike, right Mike? Uh, my digital twin. You're gonna run into a learning curve. Now, we're talking textures, we're talking coordinate systems, we're talking adaptive uh, behaviors. Now, it doesn't have to be confined, confined to a simple extrusion of glass or solid material. Um, and it sure doesn't have to be confined um, in the X and Y plane. One, often, at the early stages of design, as an architect or engineer or designer, you need to be able to model curtain wall systems that indicate more complex design intent. These systems need to be flexible and light enough to allow you to explore design iteration. But, but they also need to be robust and detailed enough to be useful as your project moves from concept to design development and then on to fabrication. In Revit, you can build complex curtain walls using massing tools. There are two potential workflows. You can model your curtain wall systems directly within the project environment from massing forms, or you can build it as a family within a conceptual design environment. Both of these methods are quite similar, but we prefer to use the conceptual design environment because the complexity of modeled elements, such as adaptive components, is better managed in a file that is separate from the project environment. Adaptive components are an adaptation of the pattern-based curtain panel. Curtain-based curtain panel. Adaptation of the panel-based curtain. 
pattern based curtain panel limited slip differential. For example, adaptive components could be used in repeating systems generated by arraying multiple components that conform to user defined constraints. Adaptive points are created by modifying reference points. Now, we talked about nodes when we were blending and revolving and uh, we were uh, working on top and bottom planes and then shrewding to that shape, swept blend, if you will. And we talked about the nodes um, that we could put in uh, because it wouldn't really define it as a floor, remember? Back in the earlier chapters, complex massing or uh, other techniques that we used earlier in the, in the lessons. So these, um, these nodes or these uh, reference points are important. And there were reference planes, reference lines, and reference points. Now, I call them nodes. We can call them whatever you want. But again, adaptive components uh, is something that you know, you've seen. You've seen adaptive components uh, on your television. And, and you were fascinated with them, as, as have I been. So, it hasn't taken me, it wasn't easy adaptive, adapting to my environment. My environment had changed over the course of time. And, 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 and I suspect I'm not the only one. We all have a change in our environment. Stuff which just happened for Christ's sakes uh, with the, corona, the COVID-19. Um, so, we're gonna be talking about conceptual uh, massing and adaptive components. So, again, if you Google that, you'll find a whole plethora of information. And where you go and where you pick is going to be uh, directly proportional to what you're going to get out of this exercise. And we're at the early stages, right? So these adaptive components uh, are better uh, managed uh, in a file that's separate from the project environment. So let's move on to the project environment. You can build your forms directly within your project environment using the in-place massing tools, which we used. When walls are constructed through the in-place tool, the conceptual design environment does not have three reference planes and 3D levels. Again, we talk about the differences, the subtle differences between creating uh, families uh, in the family editor and the in-place massing editor. And walls are a system. And you can't load in a wall from a family a file, RFA. You can duplicate a wall from an existing system within the project and then create wall iterations uh, based on the fundamentals of walls, basic walls, and then augment those uh, walls to a new system style, if you will, a system type of wall. Now, so make note that it doesn't have 3D reference planes and 3D levels. Essentially, to create a complex curtain wall within the project environment, you follow these simple steps. Well, first of all, let me close out this Louvre family, or we're going to get confused. So now we have our basic uh, three small rooms, if you will, or three full, small sandwiches, three small pockets three small envelopes. Create an in-place mass in the project environment, divide the surface, apply a surface pattern, replace the surface pattern with a pattern-based curtain panel family. Now that's in the project environment. Now let's do just that if we can. Um, actually it, it kind of has some steps um, after this, and it basically doesn't really go into the uh, the steps of exactly how to do it, but we can do that. We can do that without um, without knowing how to do it because this software platform is so intuitive. So let me move on to the second uh, paragraph in this uh, exercise: conceptual design environment. You create your curtain wall designs in the Revit conceptual design environment (CDE) which is a type of family editor. These forms reside outside the project environment. You can then reference these massing families into a project. 
environment, allowing you to explore contextual relationships within the building form. To create a complex curtain wall within the conceptual design environment, you're going to follow these simple steps. Build a new conceptual mass in the family editor. Divide the surface, apply a surface pattern, replace the surface pattern with a pattern-based curtain panel family loaded into your project. So it's basically the same uh, series of steps with the fifth step of loading it into the project. You start by design, designing a conceptual form that will represent the shape and form of the surface of the curtain wall. You are then able to subdivide the surface, surface of this form using a grid system referred to as the UV grid. The UVW coordinate system is used to plot location across the surface as surfaces are not always planar, planar, flat. This grid system automatically adjusts following the natural contours of a non-planar surface or form. The UV grids, the UV grid is then used as a guide for applying a pattern to the surface. You can investigate how you might panelize the surface to make it constructible by applying a geometric pattern to it. This pattern provides a basic graphic representation of how the panel may look. These graphic patterns can then be replaced with a parametric components with parametric components that automatically conform to the divided surface. That's a lot. But thank God for computers. But there are folks who can do this with a pencil. The beauty of it is that all of this is conveyed with a pencil. It has been. It has been. Colored pencils and pencils and chalk and uh, uh, paint, pastels, charcoal, burnt sticks. Let's take a look at the basic tools that allow us to divide the surface of a conceptual form. Start by opening the C13 square panel artifact from this book's webpage. This file represents a simple contextual shape for a curtain wall design. This form was constructed by drawing two curves at varying reference levels, and then a surface was generated between them. Select the form and then click Divide Surface in the contextual tab in the ribbon. This will divide the surface of the form and you will see a horizontal vertical grid displayed as the, this is the UV grid. You can control the display of the UV grid when it is selected. To modify the display, click the U grid or V grid button in the UV grids and intersects panel on the modified divide surface tab of the ribbon. Okay, so now it wants us to use the family editor um, to start, but it really says to create it in the, in, in, in the project environment to start. So let's just take it slow. If we're in architecture and we go to component, we go to model in place, you'll see that we can create a mass, we can create a wall, create an in-place mass in the project environment, divide the surface, an in-place mass in the project environment. Remember, by default, masses are, are the visibility graphics are shut off. Well, an in-place mass. Again, if we were to create a rectangle and just draw a rectangle, and create a form out of it, divide the surface if we got to a better view and then divide the surface U grid V grid so if you look the surface representation displays the original surface nodes or grid lines control the visibility of the surface pattern and component click the panel arrow okay so now before we uh, get ahead of ourselves notice that the U grid is selected, divides the selected surface with grid lines in the U direction. Click U grid to display or hide divisions. These grid lines are also referred to as UV lines, isoparametric lines, or contour lines. To apply a pattern to the surface, choose a pattern from the type selector. Well, it's already highlighted for, for us. And if we look in the options bar, modify divide surface uh, within the context of invoking uh, the massing tool uh, and drawing a, a primitive geometric shape on a 2D plane and then extruding that plane into the Z direction to give it depth uh, we opened an options parameter within the context of that command to adjust the parameters of the UV grid 
uh, the UV parameters. As you can see, the U grid number is 12, and uh, there is no distance radio button checked to, con to constrain that distance to a half of an inch. Um, but the uh, V grid is also um, divided up by a number parameter uh, that will constrain that, as does the U grid. But the distance parameter isn't constrained. There's no label on because we could add parameters. Um, so let's just, again, take a slow look. The V grid divides the selected surface with grid lines in the V direction. Click V grid to display or hide divisions in this direction. These grid lines are also referred to as UV lines, isoparametric lines, or contour lines. To apply a pattern to a surface, choose the pattern from the type selector. Well, isn't that great? No pattern. Right? No pattern. Well, look, let's look at the patterns. We have half step, third step, no pattern, arrows, hexagon, octagon, octagon, rotate, rectangle, rectangle, checkerboard, rhomboid, rhomboid, checkerboard, triangle, triangle flat, triangle checkerboard bent, triangle checkerboard flat, triangle step, zigzag. So, again, these um, patterns are going to help us create unique and uh, customizable curtain walls. So, again, the first paragraph says how we can model it in place, and then the second is within the conceptual design environment, or in the family environment, as a manufacturer would most likely do, because then um, the family will be uploadable from their website, so they could save us a lot of trouble <laughs> in doing it ourselves, or get a job in the manufacturing sector. So create an in-place family in the project environment, in-place mass in the project uh, environment. Divide the surface. Now, the surface pattern component. Let's take a look at this. Pattern. Displays the pattern lines and pattern fill applied to the selected surface. To control the visibility of the surface pattern and component, click the panel arrow. Well, let's take a look. Surface representation. Surface. Original surface. Nodes, UV grids and intersect lines, which is what is selected. Style material, which is not selected. Pattern, component. So you can see there are three tabs within the style box that allow us to further augment the design parameters of this wall, curtain wall, or concept, concept, concept. So click to select tab for alternates. Well, I could select form element surface to divide up into a UV grid pattern, but there's absolutely no reason why I can't do it on any surface of this mass. I'm on the right side surface. I'm on the top. I'm on the edge. I'm, you know, so I'm on the surface. Boom. Well, if you look, I selected the surface, divide the surface, so select it first. And as you can see, there are 12 divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now that's not too hard to, to understand. Right now, intersects. Divide the surface using intersecting planes selected from the drawing area. Click on planes, such as levels and reference planes, and or lines drawn on reference planes to intersect the surface. To apply a pattern to the surface, select the divided surface, and then select a pattern from the type selected to turn off intersects. Click intersects again to launch the intersects editor and select planes or lines to turn them off. Click finish to confirm. Divide the surface using intersecting planes from a list. Select inter intersecting planes such as levels or reference planes from the list. This list does not include unnamed references such as curves drawn or reference planes. To apply a pattern to the surface, select a pattern from the type selector to turn off intersects. All right, so we're going to get to that. So again, we've been able to do this with the uh, divided surface with no pattern. So the surface is divided. 
Um, I mean, all it is is a mass. That's all it is. It's nothing more than a, a mass. It has gross uh, surface area and volume, uh, but doesn't have many parameters to it. We didn't add anything that's going to allow us to uh, change these divisions unless we edit it in place. And then we would, of course, then have the option to change the UV grid pattern. So I'm going to hold that for a second, and then I'm going to uh, come over here and I'm going to get it to a grid pattern. I'm going to throw that pattern on there. And as you can see, um, again, the UV pattern, the UV grid still applies. The UV grid still applies. I can go over to here. Let's divide that number into in, in half. And let's take a look at what effect that had. And see if it had any effect. And as you can see, it did. So that's not a very aesthetically pleasing pattern. Uh, there's, there's a bit more to this. <laughs> All right, so that's doing it in place. Replace the surface pattern with a pattern-based curtain panel family. Well, if you look at these, um, these are families. If I want to edit type, we'll take a look. System family, arrows, system family, half step. All of these patterns are families. And notice you can't load any right off the bat. But fret not because uh, this, this gets so much more complex. Um, so uh, if you're eager, follow along. If not, then don't. So let's just, um, now let's take a look. Displays the original surface nodes or grid lines. Displays the pattern lines and pattern applied. Surface nodes or grid lines with a pattern. Now remember, this has a surface, right? It's a divided surface. So, again, that surface may consist of a material. So, again, if we look at this, the surface is being overridden by the pattern. The pattern doesn't have a material assigned to it. We can, and again, I will, you know me, I want to go into photorealism. You know me, I want to get right into the photorealism aspect of it. And you gotta be, uh, you gotta be careful, because you'll want to get it uh, up there under the lights in a uh, realistic virtual reality world just to look at it. And I, I'm just as guilty as the next one. You, you really want to render. You really want to render at the end of the day, right? Now, component, if you can see, pattern component is uh, is grayed out. We uh, we haven't selected a pattern. We can't select a pattern comp component because we applied a surface to it, a surface pattern. Oh, I'm sorry, a pattern. And it's, even its own surface is being overridden by that pattern. So let's just hold that thought, because again, if we just select this ellipsis, or um, we could create a pattern fill material parameter, right? So that we have uh, this option within the properties of these patterns, one after the other. Or we could do it the old fashioned, not the old fashioned way. We just apply it to this particular instance. And as you can see, all sorts of, whatever, Cornier, you can see even Cornier has uh, their own um, surface textures and uh, material patterns, material textures, if you will, materials <laughs> uh, embedded into this uh, into this project template. So, as you can see, we have at our disposal whatever material loaded into this template. Let's just hold that thought, and let's just hit OK. Let's just finish the mass. And just cancel for a second. All right, so that is that. And now it is still a mess. It's not a wall. It's a mess, not a wall. Which is, uh, it gives us, it limits our ability to do things and it, it enhances our ability to do things. Because it wasn't, this mess could have been a whole building and then we could have went that route. So we've done it within the project environment, utilizing the steps that they told us. Now let's use it using the CDE, the Conceptual Design Environment. Build a new conceptual mass in the family editor. So file, new, family, oop, conceptual, conceptual mass. 
File, New, opens a template for creating a conceptual massing model. Now, mass. Let's use a conceptual mass. And it's an RFA. As you see, when you was two, there's two, uh, there's two uh, Revit sessions really going on at once here. You got the, the, the level one curtain wall custom project, and now you have family 88, which is just the next number in sequence. Um, and as you can see, there's a difference between the project browser and the family editor project browser. Because uh, the family editor is a project, but again, it, it's only your, if it if it's a multi-floor family, it will have more floors, more levels. But if it's conceptualization, it's going to have the basics right out of the box. And that consists of a floor plan or a reference level, usually. And that's what's usually called in creating your family, a reference level. Um, and three views and, and elevations. Because if I was to do that again, you'll see the difference between the two. Now, the family editor is closed. Let's go to File, New, Family. You'll see it's picked the same thing. If I just pick a generic, um, generic model, generic model, adaptive, generic model. If I could find, that's the problem with <laughs> looking at it in this uh, generic model. It's always last in line, right? Now take a look here. You'll notice instead of it being floor one, it's a reference level, and this is where the base point comes in. Remember the insertion point. And if anyone's done any AutoCAD work, you understand. It's where you grip it when you put it in. It's where you grip it. You're holding it with your fingers. If you're holding it, if I'm holding this profile from this corner, when I put it in, it's going to be placed in that corner, and it's offset. It's going to be dictated by that reference line. Maybe it's offset parameters. And even when you extrude it. <coughs> so, smoker's cloth. All right, so just understand that. So we're in a different environment now. We're in the family editor environment. Build a new conceptual mass in the family editor. Let me close this. Front, if you want. Look how many views open up, just when you open up the family. Well, I didn't do anything, so it didn't ask me to save it. File, new, family, conceptual. As you see, there's no conceptual. Ah, conceptual mass. And there it is. I apologize. Now. We get level one, we don't get reference level, okay? Just so we uh, see the difference between the two. And it was the same, it was almost the same as is, as in opening or creating a new conceptual mass. This is that template. Build a new conceptual mass in the family editor. Okay, well, it's the same concept. If we go to uh, level one, that's the 3D view for the project. That's the 3D view for the conceptual mass. If we're in level one, and we do the same thing when we draw that that rectangle. And we create a form out of it, a solid form. And then we look at it in 3D. And we divide the surface, divide the surface settings. And this is where the UV grid comes in. It hasn't popped up yet, but it'll pop up. If we divide the surface by just hitting it, the UV grid option bar will pop up. And we have the same ability to divide it up. Now look at the surface that was picked. The surface that we picked was already uh, the top pick, the surface was picked. So now we divided the top surface, that edge, this edge, this, this face. And don't forget that face. And don't forget that face. And that face. Divide surface. That face. Divide surface. Then so you can see any surface. Tab, 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 tab. Come on. That surface we could divide. And then go back to the isometric view and take a look. ZA. We divided this thing all sorts of ways. Right? All sorts of ways. Um, okay, so again. Lots of things we could do with these masses once we have them in place. And if you pick on a surface, you'll see grips come up. 
you could do all sorts of things. Even by picking on an edge, you'll get a grip. Right? Now notice how you could really start to do some funky things with the curtain wall systems by just grabbing an edge. Right? Just grabbing an edge. Just like we, we discussed in the modeling and massing, you can see there are ways at which you could uh, start to uh, really, really uh, customize your conceptual mass. All right, so again, I'm getting way ahead of ourselves, way ahead of myself with that. So um, we can also apply a surface, right? We can apply a surface. Rectangular checkerboard. We can apply a surface, arrows. But now notice how arrows is it's tough to see it in. Arrows is tough to see. Let me give something that'll give it a little more. How it uses the surface to delineate the pattern. So if we look here, one, one, two, three. There are, are three, I should say six apexes. There's an apex here, there's an apex here, or vertice. A vertice, a vertice, a vertice here, a vertice here, and a vertice here. Because of the distance of the wall, and that's what is going to define the, the hexagon pattern, that's what the hexagon pattern is conforming um, to the fixed number of uh, UV grid di divisions. Uh, as you can see, it, it, it's pulling that parameter from um, the parameter we built into it. So now, for uh, aesthetic reasons, I'm just going to mess around through, through here so that you get a better idea of how that holds true. So if I change this number, pattern, you'll see that the pattern takes control of that. Now, let's double check that math for a second. Well, I changed, oops, no, not 21. Actually, it's directly proportional to it. Oh, I keep putting it at 21, silly, silly rabbit. 12. Must be the bipolar. Now watch, when I change the, in the options parameter, it's, it's linked into the number. The V-grid links into the pattern of the, uh, or the, ch the checkerboard layout. Um, and again, grid rotation, we can change that. Just like we could do with anything else, right? Let's see. And get it? 45 so you can change it. Tab. Sure. Alright, so as you can see, again for painting purposes, you want to paint it this way. Well that's one way of, uh, of of conveying your intent for this pattern. So then we would just load it into the project and cl uh, and close it. Right? Family 90, load it into the project and close it. Now notice where it goes, because right into the, the rather tutorial exercises. It really should go into your family library. But I'll put it in here for now, because uh, I, I'm lazy today. I'm going to save that family in there, it's loaded into the project. And sure enough, well there's family night. I'll get it out of the way and pull it back here. But still, you know, it's not a mass, it's a family, right? It's a family. It has certain parameters, but not, not many. We didn't add that many parameters to it. Okay, so let's, you know, stop there for a second. Let's read this a little forward. You start by designing a conceptual form that will represent the shape and form of the surface of the curtain wall. You are then able to subdivide the surface of this form using a grid system referred to as UV grid. 
a UVW coordinate system is used to plot location across the surface as surfaces are not always planar. The grid system automatically adjusts following the natural contours of a non-planar surface or form. The UV grid is then used as a guide for applying a pattern to the surface. You can investigate how you might panelize the surface to make it constructible by applying a geometric pattern to it. This pattern provides a basic graphic representation of how the panel may look. These graphic patterns that can then be replaced with parametric components that automatically conform to the divided surface. It gets worse. Dividing the surface. Let's look at the basic tools that will allow you to divide a surface of a conceptual form. Start by opening C13 Square Panel RFA from this book's webpage. So let's go back to the, where we're still in the project. Um, I'll leave the project open, being that we're working with families, and I'm going to open a family. I'm going to open a curtain wall family um, that I believe would be here by uh, panel. Let's see here, did I get it right? No, it's a, it's a, it's a, hold on, hold on. It's gonna be, let's see what it's gonna be. Now remember, you can't open a wall family, right? So, remember, it's it, <gasps> excuse me. This is an exercise file, so it's in the downloadable directory. You can't, it's not a, you can't load a wall family. This isn't a wall family. This is a panel family. Let's take a look at it. And again, I live in the worst part of town. It's a, it's, it, it, it's like 10 pounds of shit in a five pound box. All right, so let's take a look at this. This file represents a simple conceptual shape. They start doing this at like four o'clock in the morning. And half of them are immigrants. They just have no ethics, morals, standards, values. And they come over here and, and they get the freedom, uh, life arrival. No, he stop. Lately, it, I've been overwhelmed. They're coming at us. Let's take a look at the basic tools. I'm not anti-immigrant. I do believe in immigration reform, because I'm telling you, they're coming here, they're coming over here on OPEC money. <laughs> the old money. And it shows up in all sorts of forms and, and wants to talk about mathematics. And, and all it wants to do is have carte blanche to park anywhere it wants. And then they call the cops if you park two, two inches into their driveway. A, a man's homeless is canceled? Hey, hey, don't get me started. Listen, I have an opinion on that. Dividing the surface, start by opening C3, uh, C13 square panel. This file represents a simple conceptual shape for a curtain wall design. The form was constructed by drawing two curves at varying reference levels, and then this, a surface was generated between them. So we click on it. If we zoom in and click on it, it's not much. It's a form. Right? It's a solid form. A mass. We created this uh, family from a mass. And then we haven't divided the surface yet, but again, it was created by making two curved lines and then creating a solid form out of it by picking both lines. Right? We talked about that. We talked about how, well, in the family editor, uh, when well, it's, it's selected, we can create many shapes. And again, you can create many shapes. Right? You can create a reference plane, draw one on top, and then connect the two together. So I'm not going to get into the, we, we've done this already. I'm not going to get into it yet. We're going to have to do it all our lives, but one thing at a time. I don't know how many garbage trucks go up this block, but it seems like today it must have been five in, five in a row, one after the other. This is the loudest neighborhood in the world. And I got my windows open. It's no damn fault. But I heard it's supposed to be humid, and we had some thunderstorms today. Okay, so we open the square panel. I'm over the tangent with my temper. And uh, we see that we have a conceptual shape for a curtain wall design. The form was constructed by drawing two curves at varying reference levels, and then the surface was generated between them. Okay, now I'm not going to go into how it was drawn. I just know how it was. We could do it again if we, if we have to. Select the form, and then click Divide Surface. Same thing comes up by, based on its defaults. On the contextual tab in the ribbon, 
This will divide the surface of the form, and you will see horizontal and vertical grids displayed. This is the UV grid. You can control the display of the UV grid when it is selected. To modify the display, click the UV grid, the U grid or the V grid button in the, in the UV grids and intersects panel on the modify. Divide surfaces tab of the ribbon. Modify, divide surfaces tab of the ribbon. Okay, pause the data there and click it. This is considered the modified divide surface tab. And this is the UV grids and intersects panel of the ribbon. With the surface selected, make sure the U grid and V grid icons are highlighted in the contextual tab of the ribbon. The options parameter are highlighted in the contextual tab. Yes, highlighted here, highlighted here in the contextual tab. You have to know the words. Notice how the options bar provides a number of settings for you to modify the divided surface, and we talked about that. You can control the U grid and V grid by a number or with a specified distance if you select a number of options. You can enter a number of divisions that will distribute evenly across the surface, just like the mullions. Just like the mulligans, select distance, will, which will allow you to enter a specific absolute distance between grids across the divided surface. You're going to have to do more math. Under the distance setting, there's a drop down menu that allows you to specify a maximum or a minimum distance value. These are similar to the constraints described earlier in this chapter for basic curtain walls. Make sure the surface is divided by a number with U grid of 10 and V grid of 10. And so it wants us to divide, um, divide it with a number of 10. And 10. Double check it. It didn't accept it. 10. 10. No, it's, it's stuck to 12 because they already did it. So I have to do it in the properties parameter. 10. 10, apply. Right. So it's a 10 by 10. It's U, 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 V grid is 10 by 10. So it looks like an antenna. All right, so make sure it's set to 10 by 10. With the UV grid selected, you will see a 3D X, Y, and Z axis arrow. You will see a 3D control, an X, Y, and Z axis arrow. And an icon appears in the center of the surface. Click the icon to enable the configure UV grid layout command. Isn't that a parabola? <laughs> oh boy. It gets so much more complicated. The display will change and you can now apply specific settings to control the UV grid even further. Now again, if you look, U0 uh, and distance 19 foot 9 and a quarter, and it says number 10. That's the number of divisions. Set number of U grid, you can actually set them here. You can set the distance there. But notice that there is an angle parameter in the V direction, right? In the V direction. And you would think X, Y, Z, but now we're going to add a V parameter. Uh, the V uh, direction, and again, the UV coordinate system, right? The UVW. It's uh, <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the, view, the UVW mapping is a mathematical technique for coordinating, uh, for coordinate mapping in computer graphics. It is most common maps, it most common maps to map. In contrast to UV mapping, which maps to. That's very odd. Like the standard Cartesian coordinate system, it has three dimensions. The third dimension allows texture maps to wrap in complex waves onto irregular surfaces. This one is pretty funny. The UVW mapping is a mathematical technique for coordinate mapping, period. In computer graphics, comma, it is most commonly, it most commonly maps to map in contrast to UV mapping, which maps to period. The UVW mapping is suitable for painting an object's surface based on a solid texture. So Wiki, again, I hate to get into the Pixar aspect of this, but it is, it's, uh, 
it's universal. It's universal. Most material maps are 2D planes, are 2D plane, assigned to a 3D surface. Consequently, the coordinate system used to describe the placement and transformation of maps is different from the X, Y, and Z axis coordinates used in 3D space. Specifically, mapping coordinates use the letters U, V, and W, the three letters preceding X, Y, and Z in the alphabet. The U, V, and W coordinates parallel to the relative directions of X, Y, and Z coordinates. Parallel the relative directions. If you look at a 2D map image, U is the equivalent of X and represents the horizontal direction of the map. V is the equivalent of Y and represents the vertical direction of the map. W is the equivalent of Z and represents the directions perpendicular to the UV plane of the map. You might question why you need a depth coordinate like W for a 2D plane. One reason is because it's sometimes useful to be able to flip the orient orientation of a map relative to its geometry. To do this, you need the third coordinate. The W coordinate also has a meaning for three-dimensional procedural materials. See also unwrap UV modifier and UV map modifier. Well, you don't really need to be a wizard to know that um, you need to contrast and compare colors, right? Uh, contrast and compare colors. Uh, boy, oh boy. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I really do. Uh, but it, it gets a bit more complicated. I told you, that this is the study of space. Architecture is the study of space. Uh, again, I'm not going up <laughs> into space. Again, I'll watch it on TV. But you can see exactly what it says. It's coincident with the, with the that's why plane in the Cartesian coordinate system. It's coincident to it. Okay? Uh, lots of good examples that will give you the... Uh, generalization of, of what you're looking for. Now, again, pixelization plays a huge part, a huge part in this. Pixelization. And contrast colors. And as you can see, this is, this is for uh, propeller heads. This is definitely for propeller heads. Right? And if anyone's into animation, you don't really need much to know that if you take if you take a pencil, if you take a pencil, and on each one of these small little dog ears, you draw a ball, you draw a ball, and then you draw the ball a little further away from the original ball. Eventually, when you start flipping through the pages, you'll see you, uh, an illusion, a deception. You'll see the UVW coordinate system. You'll see it. And you don't have to go up into a rocket to figure it out. Okay? I, I'm just trying to keep, put it in simple terms. Uh, because, again, it's, it, it's all this math. And you can really get yourself, uh, you can get yourself lost. Your centroid, your uh, moment of inertia. <sighs> Whoa! Rocket man. Right? You know? We're talking about uh, the study of space. So that's where Reddit is just a, a really powerful tool. It's a really powerful tool, and it's going to open doors for you, and it's, it has changed more of the people that are using it than in anything. Uh, it's the change within an organization of the folks that use it. Because it, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. And uh, as you can see, uh, computer animation has just gone well beyond the realms. Uh, look what it does at the box office. Just look what uh, it draws uh, into the box. Again, I uh, I had my trolls cake. <laughs> they released it all at once. I had my trolls cake, and I'll be honest with you. I, when I again as a dad, you know, I was amazed with uh, animation. Even as a child, I always have been, always have been. Uh, but when you become a parent, those themes are just killers, right? You watch those. Those, uh, those kids, Disney, Pixar movies. And it's a theme that gets you. And that's the hard thing. It, those um, those uh, films can convey a theme that really tugs on the heartstrings. And that's your job. That's your job. Um, what was the word? Uh, again, it's... Um, ah, damn, there's a word uh, I wanted to uh, stress um, when it comes to conveying. And it's not ambiance, 
it's an ambiance. It's not ambiance. It's not a feeling. It's uh, more along the lines of an environment and a theme, uh, and a theme. And uh, it's not coming to focus. But I'm a patient man, and uh, again, this is a study of uh, of adaptive behaviors. And uh, again, mood, right? You have to convey a mood to a certain extent, and that can be a powerful thing if you, if you can program somebody. That's a very powerful thing, and it comes with lots of responsibility. And, and if we're in the process of dividing triangles up, you, you realize that what it really is is advertising. And there's a responsibility you have to have, right? So, now that we have been able to take a quick peek into the deeper aspect of this radar gun, <laughs> Um, you'll see that we have the ability to alter the rotation of the grid. The UV grid belt and the justification of the UV grids at the surface borders. These grid configuration parameters can also be found and modified in the properties palette. In the properties palette, set the U grid rotation value to 45 degrees and the V grid rotation value to 45 degrees and then apply. So, U, 45, tab, 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 tab. 45, tab, 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 click outside of the properties palette, or don't, and then you miss it. This is a very tricky uh, box sometimes. You gotta get in there, you gotta get in there. Well, first of all, you have to have your numbers lock on. 45, get in there. 45, tab, get out of the box. You can hover around and it'll do it, or you can hit apply. It's that constant, uh, constant electromagnetic wave that allows it to just do it, stream, real live. So again, we talked about, still hit that, take a look at the, the actual UV grid, get out of there and see with what we, how we can manipulate it. And I'm not gonna, I guess you have to constrain. Well, I don't wanna mess around with it. Okay, so let's just keep that grid selected. And notice that, double check, 45, 45. Um, hit apply. Notice how the modified values are updated in the 3D view with the configure UV grid layout command activated. In the configure UV grid layout mode, you will see a number of controls, all of which relate to parameters you can also access in the properties palette. The arrow across the middle of the grid is the grid justification marker. You can drag it to any side or corner or the center of the grid which will adjust the value of the justification property of both the U and V grids. Well, drag to change form, press the space bar to toggle. Well, that's not very uh, intuitive. I don't think that's what it meant. It meant that in the properties palette, no, in the configure UV grid, configure UV grid layout mode, in the configure UV grid layout mode, well, we haven't yet, but let's take a look. Um, in the configure UV grid layout mode, which either is in the properties palette after you create it or in the context of creating it. So let's first uh, discern whether or not the former was the case. Um, let's see. A number of controls. The arrow cross in the middle of the grid. The arrow cross. Well, that looks like an arrow cross. And, and that's not it. That's not it. So again, I'm going to take a look up here and see. I, I don't see the arrow cross. Again, if that's the arrow cross, then within the context, you, I can't change. Ah, there it is. In the layout. See, that's the word. In the configure UV grid layout, which is the button that appears, you'll see the cross. So, Southern Cross. Boy, I told you, I'll sprinkle in a little theology. You will see a number of controls, all of which relate to the parameters you can also access in the properties palette. The arrow cross. Now, now if you see, once we invoke that layout command, 
we have a, a, a few more properties within the properties palette. Like if I got out of there and selected the surface, you'll see that there's uh, some properties associated with it. But it's not until you go into the layout mode, you'll see that um, the divided surface itself has uh, properties that you can control. Belt measurement, which is rather bad. Uh, it sounds, sounds like a lot of fun uh, to me. I love belts. As a matter of fact, my son Corey has a Ducati, and if he doesn't get that uh, timing cover, that timing belt cover, then he's going to have a lot of problems. And he said he was going to take it to Kata to get it ordered. I don't know what he's doing, but he's, he better get it fixed. And he's one of the main reasons why, you know, I, uh, I am uh, am worried sick because uh, my kids, I, 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 unfortunately, I think it may have been um, just due to their uh, adaptive behavior. But the, uh, we've been rushed so much that, you know, they all had to go out and buy rice burners, cross rockets. Anyway, so as you can see, uh, the grid justification marker. Grid justification marker. You can drag it to any side or corner of this or the center of the grid, which also adjusts the value of the justification property of both um, the U, both U and V grid. So if I was to drag it over there, I actually rotated it if I was to cancel. So I get into layout mode. It doesn't necessarily snap, but it does. I just lost my my right uh, arrow, and now I got it back. Let's bring it there, and I don't see any uh, any change. Off the bat, I don't see any change. Let me just uh, take a look back at it and see if indeed did it move. You know, it went back to stay. Uh, hold on a second. I wanted to also point something else out to you. Let me, uh, my computer's running a little slow. That's a reference plane. And if we go to the level one of this, ah, uh, shoot. If we go back into the family, and go to level one of the family, I want to make sure there was no floors. As you see, this isn't a straight, straight up square. It's a, it's more of a fan brush. Um, so I, again, I was looking for something else, but it's not there. I was looking to see if there's a floor by default. Um, that was adaptive to any floor that you put this in on, but there's not. All right, so um, again, if we go back into the uh, layout mode, and if we take a look at what we could do with these uh, grips, pattern, curtain, system grid, uh, layout, shape, handle. So if you look at the belt measurement of the V-grid, we'll start to see that there's of an adjustment that's made. And what it's affecting, you see it's, it's distance is only affecting, not the number. The number's holding true at 10 because we, we set it by number, not by distance. But if we set this distance, this would affect the, uh, the U portion of the grid, the U grid. Notice how the belt measurement, I'm sorry, the V-grid. Notice how the belt measurement for the other grip didn't change for the, uh, for the U-grid. If I change it now, it changed. So the belt is going to be the line that delineates the number of grid partitions if you set it to distance. And then you can manipulate the distance to affect your grid. Now, I'll read it again. The belts represent the lines along the surface from which the distance between grids is measured. The distance is measured by chords, not curved lengths, and can be seen in the properties palette as the belt measurement parameter. The distance is measured by chords. Isn't that the cat's meow? Well, I've been saying that for the longest time, and, and that's why I play all this music. Quarter wood. It's very, uh, it's very relative, and I'm out of internet, so that's one thing about cords. <laughs> I'm on Wi-Fi. 
<laughs> sometimes it's on and sometimes it's off. But it's pluck, pluck string theory. It's pluck string theory. And, and you know what? I really miss the country. I miss the land of high water. I miss Lake Opatcom. I love Bayonne. It's my hometown. But I really miss Lake Opatcom. In any event, maybe it's because, oh, well, I can't listen to my streaming music, my streaming river, because I lost uh, my girlfriend. All right, so um, these belts are important. Okay, so dividing the surface with intersects. As you saw in the previous exercise, the divide surface tool allows you to divide the surface of a form using the natural UVW grid of the surface. However, ultraviolet light is a huge thing. So let's just stop there and, and, and notice that, um, again, um, there's many different divisions within the divisions within the divisions. Divisible by this, divisible by that. Divisible, indivisible. Now again, it's only 10 o'clock and we got a lot done. So I'm just gonna hold this here, because okay, now I have a whole bunch of um, other editing exercises I have to do. So uh, bear with me, there's a method to my madness. But listen, don't think for a second. Don't base your opinion on me based on conjecture, okay? Believe half of what you, uh, believe everything you see and half of what you hear.